All right, guys. Coach Leggett at Marvin Ridge High School. Today I'm going to talk about um, counter run game and how we use the H back in this. Um, we've been very fortunate the last couple, uh, last three years. We've had two D1 tight ends, and we found ways on how we want to use them. And not only, you know, as far as any type of run game, but especially in the GT counter game and the Y counter game while we're doing it. So when I go through this, guys, I'm going to show you some variations we did with them on different formations, um, how we use them. Like, and there's going to be also time we use them with shovel and made it look like counter, and how we use our um, quarterback in the counter run game involved with the tight end. So here we go, guys. Let me go ahead and get started. Okay, why we run counter. Big thing about why we want it, we run it for build a physical mentality. Um, want to get extra hats to play side, create great angles for the O-line. We want to change the gaps for the defense. Big thing for us, um, we want to make sure that we get great angles for the O-line. Point blank, simple. Everybody talks about angles, but we have to get great angles for O-line. doesn't matter the fronts because this year we saw more three-man, four-man fronts being changed on us. So we tried to be as much versatile with our wide counter game, especially in GTNY, that we could do with them. And also we want to be, you know, big, build a physical mentality, and that's what counter brought for us when we ran it this year. Big thing with us, too. You know, why we run it downhill, we run pistol and we run it from sidecar like in gun. It's a big play potential, can be ran against any front, three-man, four-man, can be ran against uh, multiple personnel sets and formations. And the formations you'll see today, I got wing trips, I got two-by-two two with a wing, we got tight end wing with twins away, you're going to see us in trips. So, you know, a lot of things we're going to do today, you'll see that it looks the same. Okay, it is the same for us, but we do it out of different formations, and we'll also motion the, um, the Y, the H back. So just going to show you some different uh, concepts we use with the tight end to try to confuse the defense, but it all is the same for us up front and for the tight end. All right, I know this is a little small for everybody, just talking about numbers. You know, in 2018, guys, we ran 190 um, plays with a counter run game. Um, and 1,500 of them were from uh, – 1,500 yards were from counter. We had 2,600 and 1,500 were from counter. In 2019, we had 50 runs out of 250. They were from counter. We had 300 yards, so we were about six yards per um, rush attempt. And then, you know, this past year, we had 124 counter runs out of 303, and we had 750 out of 18, 1,800 rushing yards with counter. So we averaged about seven yards per play. And, I'll, and, and the biggest one we probably had this year and we should have ran it more was Bash. We should have ran Bash more this year. We had 11 yards per carry with Bash this year. Should have happened more. Um, and that's one thing we're going to focus on next year with um, as far as the counter run game with Bash because we got a quarterback that can run. We're going to lose our tight end we had. He's going to be preferred walk on at Carolina. So we're going to have to adapt, but we are definitely going to be running Bash more out of open sets next year. All right, guys. You know, well, our our philosophy for tight ends and O-line, we want a technique, technique, technique. We don't want it to coach effort, no miss assignments, reteach, and be the most physical group on the field, finish blocks. That's our mentality up front and that tight end. Um, our tight end that's walking on, you know, prefer walking on Carolina, he improved so much from, you know, last year to this year. In North Carolina, we had two seasons in spring and the fall which was crazy, but he improved a lot. You know, he got better in the run game, and that's why we, we took off this year in the counter run game. You know, I got some diagrams coming up, guys. I'm going to show to y'all what we do. So in this diagram, this is tight end wing with twins away. We'll motion the uh, slot guy just to show jet sweep run GT counter back the other way, and I'll show this on film on how we do it. It's pretty a pretty nice play. We'll hey, – Early in the game when we ran it, we would run jet sweep, and then we would come back underneath with um, GT back the other way. Here we are in bunch set, guys. So we put our Y, you know, as that guy so we can run back. We can run split zone. We can run, um, you know, Y counter back the other way. All these things, that's why we run it. We also run a lot of pin and pull. So with our, with our bunch, we like to set him up where he can go back the other way. So when we run pin and pull, we got something back to counter back the other way. Here we are in two-by-two two set. I really like this. So our Y here, 
we'll motion him, you know, across formation. We'll run an arrow with him. We'll read it man on in man on line scrimmage. If he comes up field, we'll give run GT counter back the other day. If he squeezes and get in the hip pocket of the tackle, we're gonna throw the arrow. I got some clips on here where you could tell by the mic we just took him out of picture because he, you know, he didn't follow his keys, didn't follow the guard. He just hey, he went with the arrow. He just widened out every time. We got some big gains in the run game doing that. Here's another way just at, we do it out of wing trips, running it back the other way. Um, we will do this out of pistol and sidecar. So when we do this out of pistol, you know, we'll obviously we'll go, you know, turn to our right. He'll go back the other way. We'll do it out of sidecar. We also do it with the quarterback run game out of this. We'll flash fake, go back the other way, and uh, we'll do it out of three by one and two by two with a wing. Um, and run it to the boundary, run it to the field, try to mix it up for the defense, just give them a different tendency when we run it. And one thing you'll see today on, on film, what we try to do is we try to set up where that running back is so the defense, the defense doesn't give a tendency on where we're going. Um, you know, when you're in three by one and you got the back to you in three by one, he's to the tight end. A lot of times if you're at wide counter and you're actually running it well, defense get a tendency on you will go back weak side. Okay. So in the day, you'll see where our film, we try to put the running back the other way so the defense can't get the tendency on where we're going. He'll go to that to same the same area we want to go. We'll just put him at a different spot so the defense can't get because it looks like power, it looks like power read, or it'll look like bash the way we run it, but we're actually running wide counter back the other way. And it, it, it just it, it's a different thing for defense. I'll show you that today on film. All right, just our gap principle, guys. Just immediate gap threat equals block gap threat. And you're going to see today on some uh, cut-ups where we got guys that come and blitz, and we just take up – we'll take them up. They're in our gap. We take them, no gap threat, stay thick, square, and get, you know, help neighbor, you know, as far as our double teams. You know, with eye and hand and gap at all times, that's how we do this. We got to make sure our eyes are where we need to be, have eye discipline, especially up front, and our hands need to be where – you know, our hand placement's got to be key for us when we run GT counter. But um, I got some clips coming up. I'm going to show how we we teach our O-line up front, too. Um, how we pull, we will use a crowder sled on, on our open pull steps as far as near foot, near shoulder. We teach that with the Ys, too. And I got some clips on that in, in film where we, I'll show you near foot, near shoulder and how it helps us a lot when we go to make these blocks. Okay, first one, guys. You know, I really like this. We just talked about eyes. So right here, so we this is for the post-up guy. We're on the crowder here, and we got a linebacker, and we'll come off, I'll say set hit, and then I'll say off, off, off. They need to come off a little, uh, they need to come off a little sooner, but it's great for eyes because we'll use those guys as backers, and then they'll also I'll have them come off the ball once they hit the uh, hit the crowder slit. So just a different thing we'll use for our eyes with these um linebackers. So we see them and Yes, we want to post up. We want to be thick, but we also have to have our eyes on our inside gap to see if these backers come and blitz. But this is a great way we do it. A Crowder sled right here. I really love it. Okay, you use it for O line. You can use it for your tight ends. But we usually use it. We this is one of our key things we do for our gap principles. We'll get on the Crowder for our lift for our post guy, and then we'll use this these guys with the med balls here for backers. They'll come. They'll stay just so we'll be able to hey. It's experience, so it looks like game-like. Because I'll have them sometimes linebackers come off the ball and blitz once they hit the Crowder sled because they got to get used to that because that's some of the teams we will face. Here we go. Right here, guys, we're pulling. We'll do our open pull steps right here with the Crowder sled. Big thing, guys, I, right here, I want to have near foot, near shoulder. When we make contact. He, he does okay. He needs to have more of his near foot or his near shoulder when he makes contact. We want to be underneath the seven five. We hey, and the big thing is don't want to stop our feet on contact. When we pull right, guys, we're pulling. Hey, we're kicking out with our right shoulder, and we teach you know if we get a squeeze and long arm, you know we're gonna log that guy, and we practice that too with the tight end where he's got to see that. Not everybody's gonna box everything. I'm mean, there's some people who box it. You got people that spill it, so that's gonna be big for us on how we are able to block different you know techniques that defenses use. You know, if you don't have a Crowder sled, here's one thing we'll do. We got a shoot board here. Um, I got this, you know, this peel right here. We got it from off, Office Line Performance with um, the Charles Bentley. It's real good. It's got, you know, if you don't hit it right, 
you know, good job right here with near foot, near shoulder. Um, he makes contact. You see the force and torque he brings when he hits with near foot, near shoulder. He shouldn't wind up his uh, elbow or arm like that, but that's a pretty good job of having near foot, near shoulder. He makes contact. That's where you got more power at, what we teach when you go to kick out. You should be blocking and, you know, you know, so you see some of these linemen that block, they hop to the block, they they use two feet. You really want to have that near foot, near shoulder to create more power when you make contact. Here we are, next one. Okay, here's a post guy for us guys. Um, this is something we'll work here, just a hey, one-on-one -on -one going through it, you know, I'll go back on that so y'all can see it. The post guy on the crowder for us, you know, he's got to get that second foot in the crotch, and we'll talk about that as far as when we're going. Um, big thing for him, you know, that first step's a little lateral, but that second foot is directly in the crotch, but his eyes must be on second level. As you can tell with him, he's getting underneath that seven five with his shoulder and forearms, but his eyes must be looking to backer. It can't be, hey, your eyes can't be directly on the D-lineman. It must be uh, looking at the opposite backside backer because that's not our job. Even though we're staying thick right here, we have to have our eyes on that backside backer when we're going through here. Next thing we do, guys, and I'll show you on this clip, this is kind of like our skip pull on what we'll do here. Okay, we'll use this or also a little bit with a tight end, but he won't be in a stance here. Just when we're connecting near foot, near shoulder, we want to kick from inside out when we're using this. Just another way to put force in the ground through the um, the foot. Not When you do your skip pull, when you're putting force in the ground here, you're not putting it with your right left foot. If you're pulling from your left, you obviously want to put force in the ground with your right foot here, okay, with your opposite foot. Same thing, guys, same right here. Pretty good job right here when we're going through here. A near foot, near shoulder, getting underneath it. He makes a very good contact. That's why he's able to drive it off pretty well here. And that's where you want to be when you're doing open pull steps. We want to be violent, but we want to do it in the, violent, you know, the right way when we're pulling, guys. And uh, I'm going to show you on the first clip we're coming up on game film where we were going against a three-man front, and we were pulling and kicking out. The, he was actually a tight five. He wasn't in a four. I don't know why. But uh, – we actually would lock him, and I'll show you how how we did a very good job of locking him. Same thing here. I just showed off the shoot board, us coming down, near foot, near shoulder. Good job here. Just different ways we'll do, guys, so that we can practice it. All right, here's the first clip, guys, right here when we're doing it. All right. Uh, we got left guard pulling. We're running wide counter back the other way. We're in pistol here in three by one with a wing. Very good job by left guard of he is doing a great job of logging. Now, as you can tell on the film, the tight end does a very good job of this, near foot, near shoulder. He reads the guard's block, see the guard log, and then he kicks out. Okay? That's kind of what it needs to look like when you're doing it with a tight end. He does a good job of shuffle, shuffle. He reads the guard, guard. Near foot, near shoulder, kick out. There we go. Get a big gain. Get about 16 on that one. Okay. But it's this three by one wing here. Okay. We got a pistol. Getting our running back downhill like we wanted, wanted it to be. Okay. All right. Next one we got, guys. This is our three by one right here. Okay. This is where we're running the arrow from the H back here. All right. We're running out of pistol. But as you can tell in the mic here, and this is, you know, I'll go, I'll show you the mic. Watch him. He kind of hesitates, hesitates. We got two, we got the guard and tackle pulling, running GT back the other way. And we're using the ace back for that arrow. And we read the end man on line scrimmage here. He came straight up field, quarterback A. He gives every time. If he if he's getting into the tackles, you know, hip pocket, he's gonna throw the arrow. And on this film, guys, ace back here should have turned his head. I, I'll be honest with you. If he would have squeezed, we had numbers outside. Look at the, look at the grass for H back. We had numbers out there. So that's another way on how we use him in this, you know, with our GT counter with an arrow just to get the defense so he, you know, just off balance. Okay. 
Okay, next one we're going to do, guys, I'll show you this one. This is just, yeah, this is the tight copy right here. I actually do like running it from the scene. Yeah, so y'all can see it from the tight copy. Watch the mic back in here in the three by one set here. Run an arrow. He doesn't even, he's out of picture. And our double team, honestly, like we're doubling to the backside backer. Our double team can just stay on that guy. They can just stay on him. They ain't even got to worry about him now. He's out of picture when we run it here. That's one thing I do like about this with the arrow. It, you know, they he should be scraping over the top with the guard when the guard pulls, but he's got the guard tackle pulling and he's got the arrow. So he's looking at a lot of different things. His eyes should be on the guard, but he's not looking at it. He, do, he doesn't know where he wants to go there. Okay. Here's another one we ran, guys. It's the same play. Okay. We're running out of two by two here. We're in a two by two wing set here. We're going to motion him across the formation. Okay. He's running the arrow again, but we're running GT counter back the other way. What well, he does a good job quarterback. Okay. The guy comes up field. Okay. He gives. You're going to give that ball every time. If he squeezes, you're going to throw the arrow route. All right. So that right there tells you, I just gave you two different things you can do, but it's the same play, but it might look different to the defense. You got people who are motioning across the formation, but it's the same play we just ran earlier. All right. I really like this. It, it confuses, as you can tell right now, he motioned over to Mike. What did he do? He bumped over. Because, you know, as I've told people before, we ran wide zone off this. Okay. We'd motion over, bump over, run power. We motion over, run power read, what he would arc to number three. So even though his responsibility is to read that guard, he's still bumping over because he doesn't know what we're going we're gonna to run here. Okay, just another way to do that. All right, this is kind of right here, guys, and I'll show you the tight copy right here with the mic. Watch the mic here once he, you know, when we move him, when we run, bring that H across the formation. Watch how he bumps out, bumps out, bumps out, boom, he's out, he's done. I mean, we had a really good double team there, but he's not going to get back in the picture. All right. Okay, here we go. This is our um, three by one with a wing. We're going to flash fake. We're going to run. Now we're going to run QB counter back the other way with the Y. Okay. Um, they got upfield. They wanted to box everything in this game we, we have. And tight end does a very good job, as you can tell here. He does a really good job of near foot, near shoulder kicking out. Okay. And when that happens here, as you can tell, we do a good job. Right here, he, he picks up. Tackle, when he, he had a guy in his immediate gap, he actually took him and then he let him go. But the tight end did did his responsibility. He took who was in his gap. And so when he took when he was in his gap, he opened up the hole for the quarterback on quarterback counter. He did a very good job of near foot, near shoulder of driving him out when he did. But that's a different way. All right, for the defense, we ran power this year like this. So it really looked like power, but we run back the other way with counter back the other way for the defense. All right? Because I keep stressing that to everybody, guys. People will get tendencies on where your back is and what you're going to do with him. Um, because if you don't think so, it will happen. And that's why I think it's very important on not only what you're doing with a tight end, but also what you're doing with a running back. It's important in the counter run game, especially using the tight end and doing things with him on how you use the running back also in this. That's also tight front again. See, the guy comes up in the tackles gap. He picks him up, but he lets him go. I don't know why. He should have just stayed up with him. So he takes him, just to get enough, and then the tight end does a good job of picking him back up and create that run. Okay, next one here. We're in a two-by-two two set. Now, in the season, in our even in this formation, if we have people who would overload the field, we just run wide zone with a quarterback. We run it to the uh, boundary. Well, as you can tell here, the safeties rolled down to the boundary side where we got the wing at. So what we did, we started against some of this. So we started just – we would put the back on the other side. We flash fake him, run QB counter back to the field. We got numbers back to the field here. Okay. Good job by the tight end here, a near foot, near shoulder. He actually does a good job of, of you know, actually knocking him back inside here because he the backer does a pretty good job of squeezing it, tries to come off that butt. But very good job. By the tight end here. Reads, boom. Good job. 
But as you can tell by our numbers here, that's what I like about the wing. You know, I like the inline tight end, but you know, with a wing, you can do a lot of things. You can motion, he can come across, he can do a lot of different things. Just difficult for defense, but it's just our QB counter and two by two to the field. But our numbers were there, so we that's why we ran it back that other way. Okay, just a tight copy here, guys. I know everybody loves a tight copy. I love tight copy, especially as an O-line guy. Yep. Just enough by that tight end to get him there. Just clear it up. Okay, here we go, guys. Here's the one I show on the diagram for y'all. So we're in uh, tight end wing here. Okay, we motioned the slot. Earlier in the game, we actually did. We ran jet sweep. It's crazy. We were uh, – we get we ate we, you know we pitched it to him, and when we did we had it would probably would have been like an 85 yard touchdown, but instead he outran everybody instead of coming back or even ran jet sweep. So later in the game we set this up where we fake the jet, then we come back underneath with GT counter. I really like this play; it gets the defense flowing. Then you're going back underneath with GT counter, so it's a good play, really good play for us. And I really believe you got two. We didn't have two tight ends this year, that year, but what we did, we had a bigger receiver. You, we used him as a wing. Okay, we just arc here. Um, the tight end would block his guy, you know, in his gap. But we run GT counter back the other way. Back does a pretty good job. He almost got a little too wide here. Back coming back underneath. Um, but out there, you know, it's very tough on defense when you're running stuff full speed and then you come back the other way with counter. All right, just another way, another formation I really like. If you got them, here's a tight formation, guys. Come full speed. See that back? He got almost got a little bit too wide when you see him in, uh, in that tight front. He little bit got a little bit too wide here. But big thing, tackle two. He does a pretty good job. You know, guard kicks out, does his job. Tackle probably could have. He kind of pulled up. He pulled up a. I would have been a little bit tighter off that double team, but not bad job at all. The flow is what got was able to help that tackle, to be honest with you, from that jet. Okay, guys, here we go. We're in pistol. I show you already two by two when we had to wean to the boundary where we ran QB counter, okay, back to the field. Now we're running – hey, we're going to actually run with the running back here. We're going to run our wide counter back to the field here. Um we had actually gotten them where they started – what they started doing with us with the wing, they followed the wing in this game, okay? So we would motion the wing over when we wanted to. So, like, we were killing them to the boundary in this game. We we actually – what we do is we just put the wing, we motion them over, put him where we want, and then run back the other way where we had numbers because that, that safety they had that would actually mirror him, okay? He was another guy in the run game that tried to – who tried to match us with numbers. But what we did was just to try to counteract that, as you can tell here. I mean, we do a good job of actually picking up stuff. They blitz in our gap. There we go. Just another way, guys, to throw the defense off. We got it back. We've had him in pistol. We've had him in sidecar. And I'll show you the different things we do with him also. But that's just – just so many different ways you can do it. Here you go, guys. I had a uh, bunch. I showed you in the diagram here. Um, we have been running a lot of pin and pull in this game. All right. And so we got him set up. We run a pin and pull to the boundary. And so we had some big gains off of that. They started trying to overload us on that side. So we ran some split zone, but then we came back with wide counter uh, back the other way in bunch. I really do like this play a lot going back, you know, going back weak side. Okay. And we get good yardage here. If our wide receiver had done a better job here, we'd even had a bigger play because running back actually saw it, you know, but we couldn't get out out the backside there. But, I, you know, guys, if you run bunch and you run, you know, obviously with play action with the pass game, if you run pin and pull, you run split zone, I think this is another run, run, you know, game, run thing you need to do off of it. You need to be able to do some wide counter off of it too. Just a different look for the defense. This is just tight copy here. Come off, kick out. There we go. All right, guys. 
one thing you do, and I'll say this right now, we had, you know, if you got running backs, um, you can also use your tight end back there if you want to in your split back look. We had split back look, but we would bounce the running back here and run counter back the other way, GT counter. Um, two things, what you can do, all right? If you got a versatile tight end or you got a versatile back, um, if, okay, for us, if we like the numbers, well, hey, and, and right here he could have thrown the bounce even though – but the mic, you see the DN coming straight up field, so he's going to give it, all right? If the DN would obviously would have actually, you know, would have gotten a hip pocket tackle, he would probably would have thrown this. Mike, the mic bounces out. He's reading the opposite back in the split in this split back look, okay? He's reading the opposite back. So right here, we'll bounce him and run GT back the other way. Now, this is a violent block by the right guard here. This is called near foot, near shoulder, and I'll show you. We get to the tight copy what I mean by near foot, near shoulder. Now, this is what it's supposed to look like. But uh, this is some big plays you can have off of a uh, split back look. It's not special, guys. You know, people been running this for the longest, but I really like it out of this look because, you know, you can throw the bounce look, you can throw it to the running back, okay? Just a different way for a defense. But I want you to see this block here from the right guard when we pull here, when he kicks out. That's what near foot, near shoulder looks like. OK, running back does a good job too here, guys. And I got this from, you know, Tennessee. He does a good job here staying down the hash. Watch how he stays down the hash here, right here. Stays hash, hash, boom, out. OK, because the tackle actually was too wide. He should have been tighter off that double team because he doesn't do a very good job of getting the backer here. OK, backer takes himself out of play because should have been kicking inside out. He went on his outside shoulder. That's not a very good aiming point from the tackle. Okay, guys, here we go. All right, now, I, this is not Y counter, but it looks like to the defense, it can look like Y counter. So here, we're in a two-by-two two set, all right? We had this this uh, H back. He's He had really good hands, but he can run. So what we're doing here, so you right now, it looks like we ran this earlier. I showed you in two-by-two two with a wing. It looked like quarterback counter. I'm flash faking with the, you know, with the running back. But honestly, we're going to run, this is power read shovel. And I know everybody say, well, that ain't why I counter coach. It's not, but look what it does to the defense. I'm still pulling the guard. I'm still moving him the other way, and I'm just going back underneath and I'm pitching. Okay, just to get him involved in this, I know it's not counter, but it's to, to the defense, it looks like it. Because, hey, if you look at pre-snap, I've run in the game already in other games. I made it look like we're going to run QB counter back to the field. So now – we're going to go, hey, it looks like speed option, but we just pitch it back underneath with a shovel. This is a way to get your tight end involved in another way. All right, especially if you got an athletic one, just let him go. Okay. And I'll show this from a tight copy here. Good job here. And I'm going to say this about your H-back, guys. One thing you need to make sure – Make sure that you're running stuff. Now, if you're running power, guys, I know you got to bring him in so you can kick out inside out. But everything else, you need to make it look the same. You need to make your wide zone look the same on his alignment. Your wide counter look the same. So the defense doesn't pick up on that. Okay, here we go. All right, guys. This year, this is what we did in the two-by-two two wing here. We motion over. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you, in the spring when we were motion over, a lot of people thought we were running wide zone because we were we ran wide zone a good amount. Um, and we're in pistol too, so we run it out, out of this. We motion him over, run wide zone back to the field. Well, here, what we do a good job of here, we're going to motion him over and then run wide counter back the other way. So the defense doesn't have a clue what we're really running here because we've run so much wide zone, but we're in pistol and we're still running wide counter back to the uh, boundary. Okay, just another way to set up the defense. I like this play a lot. Um, double teams are really good. We're staying square here, staying thick to them, getting to the backside backer. Good job by the tight end. He gets a knockdown block here, near foot, near shoulder. That's what you want it to look like. All right, guys, here's another one I like. You know, you don't have if, if you don't have a tight end here, you're in stack. Look, we're in stack sets here. So we're going to run QB counter 
in a two by two stack set open set. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull the guard, but the running back now is going to lead up, okay, on the play side linebacker. He's going to lead up on him. So we'll do this. We'll fly. We'll pop up like we're going to throw the football. Quarterback will be here. Um, guard kick out, and you'll see here in the tight copy, I'll show you. The, hey, running back does a good job being patient. Guard kicks out. He'll lead up for front side backer. So that's just our QB counter now with the running back. Okay. And I'll show you here. We'll kick out with a guard, lead up with a um, running back. There we go. Just another way to do it, guys, um, in an open set. I really like this. We'll pop up and go. Just try to widen those fenders out, get them wide with that stack set. So we set up the box. Okay. All right. So we're an empty here. So we had a very athletic quarterback that year. And I'll tell you this much. We ran bash before bash was even popular. Um, so this is us running GT counter bash in the empty. You could see, hey, we had a guy in the slot there. He could run. He flat out go. So watch the flow here from the back. Mike backer here. Watch the flow. He's gone. We'll run the GT back the other way. Guys, if you got an athletic quarterback, I, I highly suggest this. Um, it's, it's tough on the defense. All that flow and then come back the other way with an athletic quarterback. You know, the safety makes a play on the backside. He does a very good job of staying put, does his job. But um, it's a good way for misdirection, guys, even in your empty set here. Okay? This is just our GT bash out of empty. Okay. So we ran here for a touchdown. Guard doesn't do a very good job. He was way too wide on this. He should have been down more into the line of scrimmage here. So we're in pistol three by one. We're going to run the wide counter back to the boundary, and we're out. To, out we're out. Touchdown. Blocked it pretty good here. Okay. Blocked that pretty good. That's how it's supposed to look. Good double team being thick, knocking him off the ball, get to the backside backer. Does a very good job by the Y here, shuffling, getting a hey, get underneath. They boxed it here. They did not squeeze. Boom. There goes the play. That's how he wanted to look. And uh, again, we're in the pistol look. And, and pistol's tough, guys, because you, you know, with the back for the defense, you don't know where to set the strength at sometimes. You know, here you're gonna set the strength more to the, you know, to the uh strength of the formation, not to the back here. But just run something, run our wide counter back the other way into the boundary. You know, the only thing I'll say about about what's tough about this is, you know, if you got if you got people who want to play sky backside with that cornerback and that safety down, you really got to take teach that safety on how to creep and get to that that you know teach that receiver how to creep to that safety. So that safety's not a part of that. You don't care about a corner. Corner they don't like tackle anyway. Okay, I really like this one. This is one we did. Okay, we're using the tight end for our shovel. If the guard does a better job here of pulling, we get a bigger, bigger play. So we're going to motion this guy. Okay, get some flow. Motion him. All right. And then we're going to shovel back underneath to get our tight end involved here. Just another way. Now, like I said, it's not a counter, but we're still pulling the guard, and we still got him coming across um, the formation. All right, this is another way just to get him a touch. And it kind of looks the same, but that flow we're having with that uh, motion, back underneath with the uh, shovel. All right, I really like this. Gets the tight end involved. Just an easy touch, especially an athletic kid. Just the guard didn't do a very good job. He, not, he didn't come off that double team like he was supposed to. All right, that's why you got to stress that with, you know, your pullers. They got to do a better job of being tight to that double team and seeing, you know, Things coming from inside out. Okay, here's what I was talking about earlier with the running back. So earlier I had it where the running back was to the wing trip side. Okay, so it looks like we're going to the weak side. Well, here we are. The running back is opposite of the wing. Okay, but as you can tell here, we're going to still run it to the boundary here. Okay, to the defense, it looks like we're running power. It looks like we're, we can run power read. We can run wide zone. 
we can do all that, but we're actually running wide counter to back to him where the running back is. But it's this just changes up for the defense. Okay, this is also a tendency breaker to help you because you can't always put the running back all right to the you can't put him to always to the wing trip side. You can't bring him over. Okay, that's too easy. Just another way for us guys. Okay, here we are running bash out of wing trips. Okay, our wing is going to art to the number three. All right, he's going to art to number three. They blitz here. We do a good job of, you know, of being in our gaps and picking up our, our assignments and our gaps. Okay, we take this one for about 35 to the house on our bash call. Okay, another way to get your quarterback if you have an athletic one involved. So we'll do our mesh read here. He reads it, takes it back the other way. Good job with our guard and tackle, staying tight, kicking out. Um, we do a good job up front of when they see people in our gap, we take them, the people who blitz. So really love this play out of wing trips. Just another way to run it, run GT counter, <clears throat> guys. And I, I stress this enough, you got an athletic quarterback using like this, guys. I'm telling you, it's tough. It's tough on defense. All right, now, here we are. I really like this one. So, we went a quad set right here. We got wing, all right? We got a wing quad set here at an in empty. So, we're in wing quads here. We ran wide counter, Q, uh, wide counter back the other day, way. So, you'll see here. So, we're going to run our QB counter, all right? Big thing, we do a pretty good job of, of kicking out here. We don't even block one guy. Our, our guy, our tight end didn't even have to block him. but you know, pretty good job up front and getting it done. This is another way, guys. We'll run wide zone to the to the uh, wing quad side. And, you know, with our quarterback, and we got an athletic quarterback, guys. So, people do, they honor that. They honor that. I really like that. That's in our wing quad set right here. I'll show you out of the tight copy. Pop up, go. Just another formation to get the quarterback involved in the counter run game. Use our tight end with that too. Okay. Here we are, guys. Now, our tight end, instead of being in a wing now, he's an inline tight end. We're going to run this in, you know, three by one with a tight end here. We're going to run bash. So we run bash here again. We're going to run GT counter. We're going to art the tight end. And this team, they were playing a seven on the tight end. So we're going to arc him to the number three, you know, to our number three. And then we're going to run GT back the other way. Quarterback does a good job of reading it here. Okay, the guy kind of sits. He kind of sat on there. He kind of came up field enough. So the quarterback took it back the other way to run GT counter. All right. So I gave you the same look. Now the tight end's got his hand on the, on the, on the line. Okay, inline tight end. That's kind of tough on the defense. You know, tight ends get lost when they get their hands on the ground, on, on, when they put their hands down. They just get lost. Uh, wing, you can see them a little bit easier, but they do get lost when they're down, hand down there. Okay? That's our, just our, you know, bash, GT bash here. Same look. We're in three by one, hand, hand down the line of scrimmage for the tight end, inline. Read, read, read back the other way. Actually, they 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 spilled it this time. So guard logged the guy, tackle got around, and we were able to get a big play. We got about a 40 uh, 40 yard gain on this. That was big for us. Okay, but another way to use a tight end where they can't see him, but you can also use him for numbers. So if he if that if the end man would actually squeeze, he gives the ball just so we have numbers to that um, trip side. That's just our bash look out of that, guys. Now, this is open trips for us. We use our tight end. We would put him in open sets, too, because he can run. So, this is just bash in our open trip side here. Okay, same to the defense. Re, 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 come up field. We're going to run it back the other way in GT counter. All right? So, I've given you, you know, a wing quad set, a wing trip set, a two-by-two two wing, you know, uh, inline tight end with a three by one. 
And now an open trips, just a, another look with this, guys, that we can do. Same, hey, same principles for us is a different look to the defense. I really enjoy this. All right, this is a like our, our play action RPO for us, but it's a play action look. So we'll actually be in three by one set here. Okay. We are going to pull the guard and we're going to pull the uh, tight end like it looks like Y counter. All right. We're in pistol. So we'll get him downhill to running back. So we're in seven man protection. We're running verticals here. Okay. We do a good job. He gets past the slide, gets past him. We throw it over their heads a little bit during hey you can tell right here look at hey look at the fake we're on the safety now the slot gets right on top of his toe he gets right on the toes of the safety okay and guys we're just running verticals over here nothing special we have set that up because we ran that play pretty good amount that game we ran wide counter so we set it up with a play action here throw our verts here just another way, guys, to use your tight end. I know he's not in the passing game here, but he's being used for us to set it up for our receivers here. Okay, here we go, guys. I really like this one. Um, we're going to motion over. But we're going to motion this time, and the running back's 2A. He's two to the side. We're going to run counter to even more the motion. Tough owner, A. Hey, it looks like Jet. Look like we're going to actually pitch it to the guy, but we're actually running counter right underneath those backers. Because this team, they love, they flow now. They can, they flow hard. So we ran uh, ran wide counter back back to the same side we ran jet here. Okay, we're going to jet here in three by one right there. And I'll show you on a tight copy what it looks like, guys, but I really like this play a lot, this jet look. Our guard, guard does an awesome job here. That's how it's supposed to look. It kicks out. We clear a hole there, good. Hard on the defense when you do that because in that look there, guys, it could look like I'm going to pitch the ball on Jet here because the running back's to that side. He could lead up, but we're actually running wide counter back or need good job to make this backers flow. All right, last one here, guys, I really like. Okay, so I've shown you this one in a two-by-two two look. We actually ran shovel. Well, I want to show you something. This is going to look like shovel again, except this time, instead of us shoveling the ball, the Y is going to come up underneath. He's going to act like he's, he's going to shovel, but he's actually running QB counter here, okay? He'll act like he's going to pitch like we're doing that with our, all, all our power reach shovel. Quarterback keeps it, okay? Well, I really like this play for the flow of it, but, you know, it can look like shovel, but it also is just QB counter. Okay, kicking out with a guard and in, in, in the Y pulling up for the play side backer here. All right. So I think this is a tough play on the defense. He'll fake the pitch, fakes the toss, and go. You know, one thing I'll tell y'all guys about, about me, if you're having a tough time with the mesh, because I know a lot of people like to go to the mesh, like they like to go attack now on the quarterback in the mesh call. I really enjoyed a toss too. Out of, the, out of the bash look, if you want to do that, I think it's big. Um, you know, that's something me and my coach have been talking about because, you know, we didn't have as much problems with people attacking the mesh when we ran our bash, but we're going to have more and more people do that. And I told him, I was like, we need to actually get, you know, used to the toss because when people start attacking the mesh, we got to have an answer for that when we do it. So. A lot of it for us, we probably don't throw it as much as I would like sometimes with a quarterback. We probably, for us, I would say we probably throw it 30% of the time because we've done some data on that. Um, you know, especially with the reads, if we got people who want to box, a lot of times we do give it. You know how it is, especially if people – if spilling, we try to get it out there, you know, have an extra hat. Um, and, and also in-game, you know, adjustments. If we got people – who are coming down weak side at like to play sky, we bring that safety down and we try to get numbers back to the field when we bounce it. But, you know, that's when we'll try to throw it, try to make some in-game in -game adjustments so we got numbers back the other way. But, um, 
you know, I'd probably say 30 percent of the time, you, you know, more and more I've seen in high school football. A lot of people are trying to box. I, there's not as much spilling as much as it used to be, which is crazy. Um, you know, I get it. If you box, if you're University of, you know, Alabama and Georgia, um, I get that. You got dudes at linebacker you, that come back to them. But, um, man, it's tough in high school if you box. I mean, it, it's tough. It is very tough. We usually carry five in a, in a game. So what we do, and I think we do a pretty good job of this is, you know, we'll run Y counter, GT counter, but, and you know, that's different for the, the O lineman. We'll run inside, outside zone, um, and then we'll run the power game. Uh, one thing we'll probably do this year, I want to get better at is dart. I think we might try to add that, try to put it in our arsenal because, you know, I think we're going to add it with the wide counter. So when we do our install, you know, we're pulling guard on wide counter. You need something else to mirror that would be dart. So we're pulling the tackle. So it's, you know, when we install, it, those kids know, okay, the guards are pulling on wide counter, but we're going to have the tackle pull on dart so we can mirror that with each other. We try to do power and power read to mirror when we do our install in inside, outside zone. And then GT counter guys, we kind of try to leave it for one day so we can actually practice to for our guard and tackle on the box and spiel, because I think that's big, especially with different looks in GT, because it changes with a three-man, four-man look. It does. It changes a lot for especially the pullers. So we try to keep it one day for that alone when we're doing our, our install. But we usually go with five or six run plays going into um, game week. Guys, I really uh, appreciate this. Appreciate the opportunity by Coach Kirby here. Uh, I really suggest, guys, if you got a tight end, use him. I think he is a unicorn, especially in high school football. He gets lost a lot, um, and you need to run it. You need to use him in the run game. Like, yeah, it's nice to use him in the passing game, and, and you know they get that they're they're lost a lot, but they are lost in the run game also too. All right, um, people don't know where they're at. You can have them as a wing. You can have them on the uh, on the line of scrimmage, in line guy. But they're I highly suggest them in high school football, especially you got one that can run and block. But it's a weapon, guys. Use it. I, I don't, I, you know, these open sets are great. If you got dudes out at receiver, I understand. But if you got a tight end, please use him. Just don't put him out wide in open sets. Use him on in the line of scrimmage. Use him as a wing. And, you know, be multiple in your run game with him. He, he is a big part of your run game. And he's just another extra offensive lineman that, that is, who's an athlete now. So I, I really suggest that, guys. I, I love a tight end. They're, they're valuable to your program, valuable to your offense, especially if you got one.